So what I'll do is I'll be quick with this section. Um, so basically what I'm trying to, uh, to talk about now is uh, intelligent insights and what that means for our customers. So really, when we talk about intelligent insights, there's kind of two things that, that we want to talk about. So the first thing is there's Cloud IQ. Cloud IQ is a Dell EMC wide initiative. So if you've got a, a power store or a power scale, it can dial home using a, a, a remote dial home service which is all secure and it can send home some, some information as well as logging, alerting, all that sort of stuff. We take that and we have a constant view of it. And really what this is, is for customers, this is your, your executive level traffic light type thing. You know, am I green? Am I amber? Am I red? You know, where am I? What does it look like on a given day? Um, we have a full roadmap for adding more and more functionality into Cloud IQ. But for the moment, all I'll, all I'll say is it's just that single uh, glass, single pane version of looking at your, your infrastructure from a Dell EMC perspective. The main thing though that I want to talk about today is Data IQ. So Data IQ is a piece of software that we're trying to get, uh, that we're releasing, let me just reset this counter, that we're releasing to answer some real core uh, questions. So version one with version two coming out very, very soon uh, is, is basic monitoring or monitoring of, of, of power scale clusters plus the uh, what we would call the data file analytics type or data management type stuff. And that's what I want to go into today. So let me just get started with that. So the questions that we're really trying to answer when it comes to data IQ is the ones I've put up here. So, you know, what, do you know what type of data you have? You know, do you know how much it costs and where it is? You know, is it on the right platform? Can you have that single pane view of your data? And when we say your data, we're not talking about a file tool that stats files and tells you, hey, this file's over there and it's called this, and it's owned by this person. We, we can, you know, go in and, and work that stuff out. But the point is that's not what we're trying to solve with this. What we're trying to do is give business insights into the actual data. So what does that look like? So Data IQ itself um, is effectively split into three steps, or the three steps I'm going to talk about today. So the first step is the discovery step. We have a, uh, a discovery engine, uh, a distributed discovery engine, very, very fast. We can scan billions and billions and billions of files very, very quickly. And that gives us that view. And I'm gonna have, I'm gonna walk through a couple of slides that actually show example of this and probably ask questions then. Um, uh Go ahead. Sorry. Hey, you're yeah, so you, you mentioned all data across billions of files and objects. Is, it, is this just an Isilon solution or is it support, you no. know, power store and uh, file systems and power max and those sorts of things or yeah. uh, and yeah. I'll, other non-Dell vendors, non-Dell yeah. EMC? So, so I'll cover that next, but yes. Yeah, so we, we support virtually anything. Um, we include it with power store, uh, sorry. And, you know, all the, basically all the Dell EMC products but we can uh, scan third-party uh, infrastructure like a NAS or a third-party object cloud or even the public cloud. Um, so yeah, we can do all of that. So we can get, the customer can get their entire view of what they've got. And I'll, I'll talk through this quickly and then it'll probably make a bit more sense. So, so understanding the data, um, cause I'm just mindful for time. So understanding the data, you know, we, we, we've got ways of classifying that data using uh, policies and tagging, as well as having a customer being able to actually self-service, say, hey, that's my data, that belongs to this project. And the projects or business assets, that's really what the customers care about. Then once you, what you, once you know that, you can then act on it, right? And so, what we mean by act on it is move where it is. So are you also looking at what type of applications the, the data belongs to? As part um, we, of the yeah, we... We, we can do that. I mean, it's all, there's all a whole engine. Put it this way, I, I could present an hour or an hour and a half just on what data IQ can do. But yes, there's, there's ways for us to um, classify data based on, you know, location, what type of file type it is, and all, all of that is derived or can be derived by what application uses it. So let me just give you a quick example. And um, so let's say we've got this scenario, we've got all these files and the, the round ones are objects. Really, really simple. We've statted them, so we know they're there, but the point is we don't know what they mean. And again, you know, we can obviously do it across multiple systems and the third party. Um, but somewhere, someone out there, typically not IT, some sort of data owner or power owner, they know what each of those files actually is. Is it a JPEG? Is it a piece of code? 
you know, is it a blob, whatever, right? And what we allow customers to do either through automated methods or a self-service portal to, oops, sorry, to give them access to do, to do that uh, dynamically is they can tag all of these together. And what we start to do is we start to group all of these different locations. And we can also in data IQ say the costs of all these locations. And then what that allows us to do is basically build that constant view of a business asset. And we can tell you that green business asset, it actually costs you this much and it's in all these different locations. And by the way, we've got plugins for Data IQ where we can say, you know, a percentage of your data is actually duplicated. You've got some of it here and you've also got the same set of data there. And we can allow customers to make decisions about that. Um, we can also have a self-service portal where customers can actually pick up a data and move it. So they could say, well, look, I don't need that data anymore. You can archive it. And the end user, the, the data owner can make that decision, which brings to the final point. And again, I'm being very quick to get back to Koshik's time. So he's got time to wrap up here. But then we can have a system that allows you to move the data. So Data IQ also includes distributed, very fast data movers that can say, okay, sorry, you don't want that data on your high performance power scale anymore. Okay, well, I can lift and shift that to the public cloud or or whatever. And again, this is all totally separate from any functionality that PowerScale or PowerStore or anything provides. This is a, a, a outside of it. So you could use this with cloud pools or without, right? Go ahead. And just um, on, on this um, as a concept, um, this requires a, a significant amount of input from the business. So, because obviously people have to say who owns the data, and they have to be aware when you're making changes because obviously there could be things like GDPR issues, regulatory issues, uh, agreements around date protection. Um, yep. So how does the business get a visibility of this interface to that level of granularity? Yeah, so what I'll do is I, I would love to answer that question, but I know we've only got five minutes left, so I'll take that off. I guess it's a long not. question then, is it? it, it well, it's, it's not <laughs> it's a it, long it, answer. Okay. I'll, give you, I'll give you a quick answer. The quick answer is that there, there's, there's scripted policy ways of doing it, and there's actually an interface. That, it, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to answer without me giving you a lot. Okay, of so I'll make, I'll, make, I'll make it easy then. If yeah. I'm a business user, do I get a portal where I can look at my data and say, here's how I've set the policy for the stuff I want? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and on this. that, is it is it API driven so I can script it myself and put it in other tools as well? That's that's correct. Yes. And there's plugins that you could write. So you could you could write a plugin to to interface with it so that when we scan a particular directory or file type, we can we can trigger using a particular plugin that you've um, written or whatever as well yeah. so right. and uh, and a similar question about uh, you know you told before that you you can archive stuff or move stuff around and uh, you know how, how can i be sure that all of this is monitored sometime uh, somehow and uh, how can i uh you know be sure that you are not moving the wrong files so do, do you have do, do you also have the ability to leave some something when you archive a, a file, like a stub file, or yeah. notice that say, oh, you move these things. Yeah. So, so two questions there. So, yes, there is a, an auditing component too, because obviously, if you're deleting data and doing stuff like that, it, there needs to be auditing uh, there. Secondly, your question around stubbing. Today, we do not stub. Um, whether we do that in the future is to be determined. But yeah, we don't we don't do that today. So it is it is a it is a move. If you want to do transparent tiering, there's already technologies in say power scale to do that. Um, so this would be separate to that. 